Ah, hello, good morning, nice to see you and welcome to today's live lesson. It's all about the topic of work. We're gonna look at vocabulary, idioms, language, some fun and games to help you speak confidently about the topic of work in IELTS speaking. First of all, let's begin with a bit of this. Hello, good morning and welcome. It's so nice to see you all. Um, now, you may have noticed today for many people, we are starting an hour later. Actually, I'm starting the same time, but the clocks have changed. At the, the summer time has finished. The clocks go back here in Europe, at least. But I hope most of you realize that. So listen, welcome um, for all of you joining me today. It's a pleasure to be here. Our topic today is this one, as I mentioned, is all about work. How exciting is that? Um, we're going to be looking at different aspects of work and the language that we need to do that. Lovely. Now then, today is, well, today it's kind of a sunny day. I'm looking out the window, the window's behind me. It's a sunny day, but the clouds are coming over. I think autumn is definitely here. I wonder what the weather like is where you are. Well, um, today, just to remind you, if you are here on YouTube, please do remember to subscribe, turn on the notifications so that you can find out about upcoming videos. Do remember my videos here, if I can get it, are the live lessons we do once a month, right? So it's the first Thursday, if you can say that, the first Thursday um, of each month beginning at 10 a.m. Spain time. So look out for that. And today, what else have we got? I'm going to share with you something. I got a message it was, I think, a couple of weeks ago from a student who was in the gold course and she sent me a message. It was a lovely message. I wanted to share with you very briefly. Um, it was from Mariam and Mariam said, Hi, dear teacher Keith, I passed the exam with flying colours. Lovely expression. And I got my desired score. I'm here to say I'll always be grateful. Without your support, I would never have succeeded. And she says later, I can vividly remember... I first came across your YouTube channel when COVID-19 broke out. Wow. So Mar Mariam had been studying with me a long, long time. Um, she was watching the lessons, the animals lessons on the YouTube, on the YouTube channel. She later joined the gold course. Um, and wow, she says she's done a great job. She succeeded in her test. So Mariam, very, very big congratulations. And thank you for sharing the message with me and uh, I'm sure can be an inspiration for everybody who's going to take the test soon. So guys, let's see who is in the house today. We've got from Formosa, Wan Ching. Wan Ching in Formosa, nice to see you. We've got Abdallah Hanyi, nice to see you again, lovely. Lucy here, excellent. Erfran from Iran, I hope you are um, staying safe, my friend. Who else is here? We've got Lak, how do I pronounce this? Lakshmi, Lakshmi Priya, I think that is right. Lovely to see you here with a cute little um, avatar. Stefano, long time no see, lovely to see you here. Excellent, and Tony as well, hello, nice to see you. Ramazan, hello from Uzbekistan. Getting more and more people from Uzbekistan following me, that's great. And we've got Chandana all the way from Sri Lanka. Lovely to see you here. Nice, an emerald. Good morning to you as well. So it's lovely to see everybody here. And um, what I'll do first of all, I think, is just go through what we're going to do today, right? To show you the uh, the plan for today. The lesson, whoa, is normally about an hour and a half. <laughs> Can I get rid of the cat? It's about an hour and a half. The lesson, more or less. Um, we're gonna we're talking about the topic of work, right? So this over here is not my cat. I know it looks like it, but um, this is what sometimes work feels like, right? Hectic, 
frustrated and going so, so, so fast. Um, so this is what we're going to begin with, the topic of work. I'm going to move on to talk about the vocabulary that we need, in particular, the vocab vocabulary to answer this question, right? What do you do? What do you do? <laughs> what do you do? I wonder, what do you do? It's a very, very common question in IELTS speaking. And I'll be looking at the answer, not only if you work, but actually also if you don't work, right? How do you answer this question? Um, we'll be doing a listening task, testing your uh, listening comprehension related to this topic. And also, as I mentioned, we'll be looking at what if you don't work outside the home? I say outside the home because, of course, people working inside the home, it's still work, but it's not paid for work. But we still you know, need to know how to talk about that and how to cook like in the Flintstones. Lovely. We're going to look at the topic of changes in the job market over the past years. This has changed so much. So there'll be some interesting language and ideas there, which will help you, especially in questions around part three, if that comes up. And some idioms, of course, I always like to have a few idioms. Do you know this one? To pull your weight. Hmm. Interesting idiom, which we can use on this topic. Right. So we're going to be looking at that. And then we'll be finishing with a game of Kahoot. Fantastic. Brilliant. We've got a few comments coming up from people. Um, I'm a secretary, says Fariba. Um, Danielle says, a to-be nephrologist. Lovely. Great. We've also got, um, who else? I'm currently working in government office in Nepal, says Santosh. Um, Nilkshi says, I'm a nurse. Right. We're going to find out more about your jobs very, very, very soon. But first of all, I guess, let's kick off with this. Da, 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 da. Boom. I'll speak in work. Uh, let's begin with some vocabulary. To warm up, I'd like to test you. I'd like you to fill in the gap with one word, right? Fill in the gap with one word. Just put in the chat box, put number one, ba -ba -ba, number two, ba -ba -ba, number three, ba-ba-ba. Ba -ba. OK, let me know what you think the answers are. I'll take this up a little bit. Answers at the bottom, <laughs> but not yet, my friend. Right. And I'll put on just a little bit of uh, classical music to help you get into the mood. Right. Excellent. I'll stop that there. Lovely. Listen, some brilliant answers. I think you've all got this quite down to a T. He works as a chef, right? That was as, I don't think anybody else, anybody had anything different. We all had as. Fariba says that. Annie says that. Uh, Trang Yung Nyu says that as well. As. He works as a chef. Brilliant. He's responsible for Again, I think you all got the right answer here. As for, responsible for, and notice the grammar that it's for doing something, right? For doing something. Um, and I don't work, I'm a. Now, a few people put unemployed 
you can't say unemployed um, because because I can't spell it. <laughs> no, that's not true. Because unemployed is an adjective. It's not a noun. So you can't say a unemployed or an unemployed. You can say I am unemployed, right? It would have to be unemployed without a. So here, because we've got a, that is not possible. What we will have is what a lot of you said is student is one possibility. Housewife, a few people said. Um, see if anybody else. The same problem here. Let me show you another. Oh, I'm having trouble with my mouse today. Not that mouse, my real mouse. <laughs> Uh, come back. Julia says self-employed. Again, a self-employed, you can't say. You can say a self-employed person, possibly, right? Um, what else have we got? So, yeah, Nick, Nick she said housewife. Um, I'm a full-time student. Nice. Full-time, part-time, you can have. Brilliant. Uh, housewife, we had quite a few with housewife, student, Anybody else? Yeah, here we go. So Sabika, homemaker. This has become a popular word in the USA, I think more than in England. I'm not sure we use it too much in England, but homemaker is the person who looks after the house, right? You do the housework, maybe the cooking, looking after the children, you're the, looking after the house. Um, housewife but you see if you're a man nowadays a lot of men look after the house and the woman goes out to work so you could be a house husband or homemaker covers both right we've got this other expression right a stay at home dad or mum again depending if, if we're talking about a man or a, a woman so a stay at home dad stay at home mum Homemaker. All of these are possible, right, if you're not working. Excellent. Good. So lovely to see that you're all wide awake and that you've all got this down to a T. I mean, you've got it perfect, right? OK, let's move on. Introductions. What do you do for a living? Now, some of you put in here a few um, answers, but let's have a look. I There are different ways we can answer this. Before I ask you, let me just go through. We can say, I work in a place, right? I work in a bank. I work in a bank. I work in a hospital. Now, what you want to try and do here is get your stress on the last, on the place, right? I work in a is just one sound. I work in a. I work in a. It sounds almost like one word, right? And then you stress the place. I work in a bank. Try that. I work in a bank. I work in a school. I work in a hospital. Okay. I work in a bank. I work in a school. Boom. You stress that, that last word. You can say it for whatever's true for you, of course. Okay. Um, you can say, I work in a and then the field of work. I don't mean the field as in the countryside. I mean the area of work, the field or the industry, maybe, or area. Let's give an example, right? I work in a bank. I work in the field. I work in finance. That would be the field, right? I work in finance. I work in education. And again, we're stressing the stressed syllable of that word. I work in finance. I work in education. Really stress that to get the nice rhythm. Um, I work in building. I work in sport. I work in media, right? Whatever it may be. And finally, of course, we've said I work as a builder, as a teacher as a nurse or a or an yeah let's make that clear because it can be a or an of course 
I work as an engineer. Or simply, I'm, a, I'm an engineer. I'm a teacher. I'm a chef. I'm a nurse. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a what? <laughs> I'm a something, right? Okay, <clears throat> excellent. Now, I'm going to ask you the question, but I want you to bear with me a moment because we're going to try something here. Let me see if I can do this. <laughs> can I do this? Yes, bear with me. I'm going to see if I can find something. I don't know if this is going to work. I'm always trying new things and I'm not sure this is going to work, but let's see. If it doesn't work, <laughs> I'll give up straight away. No, no, no. If at first you don't succeed, try, try, try again. So they say, right? So here we go. I've got to get this code to stick in here. And theoretically, I should be able to connect. Oh, okay. Here we go. I think I can do it. I think I can do it. Bear with me, guys. What do you do for a living? That is the question. So I'd like you in the chat just to write down what you do. What do you do for a living? And let's find out what you guys do. you here I'm a student <clears throat> I work as a driver truck as a truck driver Admaljid a truck driver I work in a house interesting I work in a <clears throat> HR consultant all, all right very very interesting let me switch you over to this one I'm going to show you on the website these are the, your ideas that have come up, right? We've got pensioner, consultant, home worker. <laughs> yes, okay. Hello. <clears throat> Beauty, sales, dentist, I can see. Some of these are harder to see, aren't they? A pensioner comes up quite a lot. I've got so many older people here. That's interesting. A lawyer, software engineer, IT engineer, quite a few. Yasmin is a piping engineer. Right, interesting. A lot of the answers are so long, that's quite hard to follow, isn't it? But very, very interesting. Let me come back to that. Let me share some of the ones we've got here. Um, uh, Yi says, I'm a lawyer. I work in a shopping center. Great. Freelancer. I work at a clinic as a receptionist. Lovely. Poo, that's really nice. Shrukita, I work in... Right, I'm going to help you here. Do you remember in? You want a. You want to put the a in there to make it really clear. I work in a logistics company. Great. Chandana, uh, an accountant. <clears throat> Marlene. Research Support Officer at the University of Malta. Lovely. Great. <clears throat> uh, Mustafa, I've been working as a crane operator in a steel company. Very interesting. Great. Ramazon, I work as a designer. <clears throat> Lovely. Yasmin says, let's bring you in, Yasmin. You said, I work in a shipbuilding industry as a piping engineer. Very interesting. Nice. <clears throat> Mohammed is a graphics designer. RTM, I'm a game developer. I didn't know that. That's interesting. Great. And Mehmed says, I am a slave of the new system of the business. Join the club, aren't we all? <laughs> Very nice. Okay, lovely. <clears throat> now, just going back to the, uh, the thing here, it seems like there are a lot of students and a lot of pensioners, which I find very interesting. Um, and mechanics seem quite a lot there. Home workers seem to be quite common as well. So that's stay at home, dad or mum. 
very, very interesting. Okay, so it's interesting to see what you all do and find out what your jobs are. <clears throat> um, moving on, I'm going to look at some templates and sentence stress, if you like, here. Okay, um, so here, <clears throat> templates and sentence stress. Whoa, excuse me. As I mentioned, I work as a bum, right? I work as a, not as a bum, I work as a engineer, as an engineer. As somebody said, it's very nice to use the present perfect continuous. I have been doing this or this job for so many years, right? Let's say for three years. And I love it, hate it, don't like it, like it a little bit, <clears throat> okay? So you can say, for example, right, I work as a teacher. I've been doing this job for 20 odd years and I love it. By the way, 20 odd years means about 20 years, 20 something years. If you're not sure exactly, 20 something years, 20 odd years. <clears throat> what I want you to notice is the sentence stress, right? And I'm going to underline it to make it really clear. I'm going to try. My fingers are not like long enough. I can just do this. Here we go. <clears throat> I work as a teacher. I've been doing... Whoa. I've been doing this job for 20 odd years and I love it. Okay. So these are the words you need to be stressing. I work as a teacher. I've been doing this job for 20 odd years and I love it. And what I want you to do is really exaggerate, right? Make it really, really over the top, much stronger than usual. Because when you exaggerate in your practice, then later when you speak normally, it'll be perfect. If you don't, then the stress will be too quiet because in many languages, the stress is so different and much less than in English. So you need to exaggerate, right? So do it with me. There's a simple practice, okay? And you can fill in your own job and your own situation if you like. So I would say, I work as a teacher. I've been doing this job for 20 odd years. And I love it. Great. You can even nod your head on the stress. <laughs> it's a really good idea. I work as a teacher. I've been doing this job for 20 years and I love it. The thing is, just remember, when you're speaking to people, don't do that with your head. <laughs> You'll headbutt them. <clears throat> okay, great. Sentence stress. So simple template, simple sentence stress. Okay. <clears throat> Excellent. Good. Another one here. Another example. What if you don't love it? Well, <laughs> I mean, not everybody loves their job, right? Um, I work as a teacher. I've been doing this job for around 20 years. I kind of like it. I kind of like it, or I don't mind it. You know, it's okay. I don't mind it. Nice expression. We often say it's a bit of a joke, but it's true, maybe, that basically you work to pay. You work to live, right? You don't live to work. You work to pay the rent. It pays the rent. Do you like your job? Well, it pays the rent. <laughs> Even if you have a mortgage, we say it pays the rent. <clears throat> it's not bad. So these are other ways of, of saying it's OK, right? Of course, you could say I don't like it. I want to change. It's an important point, right? I think we do remember in, in IELTS, you can be positive, you can be negative. If you want to say I hate my job, I'd love to change, that's fine. You don't have to be positive all the time. You don't have to tell the truth, but you can. You can be negative if you want, right? I work as a teacher. I've been doing it for 20 years. 
Oh, I really don't like it. I hate this job. I want to do something else. It just pays the rent. <laughs> the important thing is not being happy. The important thing is using good English in the test, in life. It's, not, it's important to be happy, of course. Right. So there we go. Two simple templates that you can use. Let's have a look if anybody's chiming in. Let's have a book. Glacier Quan. I work as a marketing manage, manager. I've been doing this job for eight years. I hate the job and trying to change my job. That's great. Really, really good. I'm just going to add here. I think you've got a typo. I know you've got a typo. Marketing manager. Great. Nice. Rizna Fatima. Welcome. You've made it at last. <laughs> Ah, right. Uh, Gulong John, I'm a student. I've been doing this job for eight years and I don't mind it. Now, okay, being a student is not a job, right? Because it's not paid, basically. So what you have to do here is just take out job. Just take out the word job. I'm a student. I've been doing this for eight years and I don't mind it. That is perfect. Great. Nice. Uh, we've got Pion. I work as a software engineer and I've been doing this job for 10 odd years and I do love it. That is so nice, Pion. Very, very nice. Like it. I wonder if I can move myself just up here. No, I can move you across and down. <laughs> okay, Giotti. I work as finance controller. I've been doing this job for around 10 years and I don't mind it. Right, good. Remember, I work as... You need the A, ah, right, Giotti? It's a great reminder that can help everybody, remind everybody that we want to put in the A, ah, right? I work as a finance controller. Nice. Love it. Very, very, very nice. <laughs> what else have we got? Bato says, I work as an... Ah, a civil engineer. I've been working this job three odd years and I love my job, but I couldn't like my industry. Oh, that's interesting. Right. Right. Very, very interesting. So that's nice. Lovely. I'm just going to change your here, an to a. Ah. Okay. An engineer. I've been working. I've been working this job. I would say I've been working in this job. Right. I think that's better. I work as a civil engineer. I've been working in this job three odd years. You can say four, three odd years, or just three odd years, right? Bateau, lovely, very, very nice. Excellent. So some nice templates we can be using here. It's also nice if you say how you help people. Um, it can just add a bit of color to your answer, right? I think especially if you're thinking not only for IELTS speaking test, but also for job interviews and even when you're meeting people at work and, co and not colleagues, but other people in other jobs. It's an interesting way of explaining your job, right? Um, it kind of explains why you do what you do rather than saying, well, I'm a teacher. Oh, well, that's interesting. Oh, no, but I'm a teacher, right? And I help people learn English and build their confidence in speaking. It's a much richer answer and a more interesting answer, right? I work as an engineer. Oh, that's interesting. No, no, no. I work as an engineer and I help people. Um, and I help people what? And I help, not people, I help create and design beautiful pieces of architecture that can embellish the whole landscape of a city. Right. You can make something much more interesting by using this kind of template. I work as a blump and I help do something or I help people do something. Mine, I work as a teacher and I help people learn English and build their confidence in speaking. Great. OK. Good. I'm going to come and check in with you in a moment, but let's move on because for this topic, you also want to think about the following because these are, well, they're common questions that come up 
right? Now, why do you do your job? Why do you do it? Um, and what responsibilities you have? So what we can say is, for example, it's rewarding, right? I'm a teacher. Why do you do it? Well, because it's rewarding. It's challenging. I get to do something. I get to... I get to do something like... Let me put in an example at the bottom. In my job, I get to meet lots of interesting people, of course. And help them become confident communicators. For example, right, I get to. It means I have the opportunity to do something. I get to do this. I get to do that. I get to travel. I get to help people. I get to see people travel the world because they've passed the test. Whatever it may be, right? I get to do da 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 da. Or I'll put this in bold just to make it really clear. It's rewarding. I get to. What I really like about my job is. And this is a nice phrase because it's an emphatic phrase. Emphatic means you're emphasizing something, right? You could say, I like the salary. Okay, but richer English, what I really like about my job is the salary, the money. <laughs> no, what I really like about my job is meeting other people. What I really like about my job is the flexibility to work from home for example, right? So again, nice little phrase that you can use to talk about why you do something, right? Why you do it. Right, I'm going to come back to you in a moment, guys. I've got lots of interesting comments. What the other thing is, what responsibilities you have. Actually, before I do that, let me chime in with some of your comments. Um, let's have a look. I work as a secretary and help my boss at the office. Nice, that's it, great. Um, I'm about to work as a teacher and I help people learning new knowledge. Very good, great. Shruktika, I work as a cosmetologist and I help people to look better. Very nice, great. Bao, I work as a bartender and I help people enjoy their great drink. Love it, very nice. Santosh says, I work as a civil engineer and I help people by building needed infrastructure such as Bridge Road. That's interesting, that's nice. There's a couple of things, Santosh, that I'm going to change to help you and everybody else. I work as a civil engineer and I help people by building needed infrastructure such as bridges and roads. Now, roads, R-O-A-D-S. Why is it not changing? Help. R-O-A-D-S. Okay. Great. Now, I put it in the plural, right? Because you're talking about not a bridge, a particular bridge, but bridges generally, right? And it's a civil engineer. But that's great. Great reminder to help everybody look at that. Thank you so much. Um, we've got... Where else have we got? We had a nice one up here. I get to save lives of those who are suffering with diseases and help them, if possible, to recover from their complaints. Very nice. I'm guessing you're a nurse or a doctor, but lovely. Very, very nice. Great. <laughs> Leila, what I really like about my job is nothing. <laughs> oh, poor Leila. Oh, dear. What I really like about my job is nothing, right? Or 
There's nothing I really like about my job. Yes. Mano, I get to teach children English. Lovely. Nice. Very, very nice. Great. Good. I'm looking. Oh, gosh, the comments are so fast. Let's have a look at uh, Romelia. I'm a biomedical scientist and I do love my job as I can help people to keep themselves healthy. In my area of expertise, I can carry out experiments and do research. Wow, Romelia, that is fantastic. Not only your job, but your English is fantastic. Very, very nice. Love it. Okay, so we've talked about the why and what you get to do. Let's talk also about responsibilities. Um, talking about this, we can say, I have to, let's say I'm a nurse. I have to look after sick people. I'm responsible for looking after sick people. It's up to me to make sure sick people are looked after. My main duties are da, 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 right? So there's a lot of things you can say. For example, so I'll just put in some examples, right? I have to look after sick people. My, I'm responsible for looking. So notice it's responsible for looking after patients. I have to, I'm responsible for, it's up to me to, it's up to me to make sure the correct medicine is given, for example, right? And my main duties are, duties, if it's plural, or my main duty is, my main duties are, um, are what? Uh, let's say my main duties are, oh gosh, uh, giving medicine, um, caring for patients, checking the correct dosage. I'm just making this up. Obviously, I've never been a nurse. I'm not too sure exactly what nurses do. I know, although I know you are invaluable so here, different ways we can say, right? I have to do something. I'm responsible for looking. It's up to me to make sure that or the correct medicine is given. My main duties are giving medicine, caring for patients, checking the correct dosage, and so on and so forth. Great. So we can talk about responsibilities as well. Another question that often comes up is in, in our speaking is about future job, right? Would you like to change your job? What would you like to do in the future? Um, would you change anything? So future jobs you can be thinking about as well. And future jobs you may want to say, I wouldn't mind being a fireman or a firefighter, maybe I should say. I'd love to be a doctor. So again, very simple expressions. You can keep it simple, especially in part one in IELTS speaking. You don't have to be over complicated. You're just getting warmed up. It's the start of the test, talking about work and jobs. Um, to recap, talk about what you do, how you help people, um, your responsibilities, things that you do, and maybe your future job, what you would like to do in the future. Right, good. Safna says, I'm, as a teacher, I am responsible for pupils. I am a teacher. If you say as, you want to say I work as a teacher. Yeah, I work as a teacher. And I think I would say I'm responsible for my pupils. I think it makes it more personal, right? Linda says, I work as a nurse. I help patients to recover from their illness. Great. Black Panther, hello, says, I wouldn't, with a T, I wouldn't mind being a doctor. Lovely. Nice. 
Uh, what else have we got? B says, without faltering, I'm going to change a job as my government assigned me not belong to my former faculty. Right, I'm going to change. I would say I'm going to change my job. I'm going to change my job as my government assigned me um, to not belong. I think to not belong to my former faculty. If I've understood correctly, so. So they've assigned you a new post that is not a part of your former faculty, I guess. Right. OK. Uh, Ali says, I'm not a job hopper, but I wouldn't mind it to use my untapped potential. Right. A job hopper, of course, is very fashionable nowadays, is people moving quickly from one job to another, maybe every three months or six months to pick up new skills uh, and contacts and networks. So it's, yeah, very, very common. Nice, Ali. That's great. Um, Marielle says, I wouldn't mind being a spa manager in the future. That's an interesting job. Nice and good English. And you add your forte. Oh, no, we've got somebody else. Sorry. That is Manod, says my forte is teaching. OK. Stefano, I wouldn't mind being a dreamer. <laughs> is somebody going to pay you to be a dreamer? <laughs> Maybe they are. I don't know. OK. Uh, what else have we got? Black Panther, I'd love to be a model. Anna says, I'm responsible for giving excellent knowledge to students. Right, great. Lovely, Anna, very, very nice. So we've looked at lots of different language here. I'm just going to share this link with you, right? This is a, a, a website link. Um, and it's about better ways to answer what do you do. And this is not for IELTS, right? Just to make it clear. This is a website. It's about people who are, you know, maybe looking for a new job or are networking or looking to grow their career. And very often in your working life, people say, you know, what do you do? Oh, I'm a teacher. And it's not an interesting answer. And it's about how to give a better answer to this question, what do you do? I'm going to ask Burns if you can share this in the um, in the chat. That would be fantastic. Um, and let me just show you on the website over here. Seven better ways to answer what do you do. It's quite interesting, right? For example, you say, I'm in sales. They think you're a pushy, sweet talking charmer. <laughs> it's about what people think. If you just say, I'm a lawyer, people think, oh, yes, you're the argumentative type. If you say, I'm an accountant, people think you're a numbers geek. So it's, it's better to give more information, not just a one do. So ideas talk about how you help people. We mentioned this, right? That's really a good idea to explain how you help people with your job. You can give a story or an anecdote about your job, something that happened to you. It all makes it always interesting. You can make it a teachable moment by explaining to people, you know, like if you are an engineer, explain if you're a, I don't know, a, an electrical engineer, explain what you do, explain how the job works, because many people don't actually know. Um, I say to people, I'm an online teacher, and they go, what, 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 what is that exactly? And it's sometimes you have to explain what, what it means to people. So you can make it a teachable moment, be vulnerable, be relevant, let your free... <laughs> yeah, I will let you go and look at that. It's just an interesting little... Uh, article to think about better ways of answering the what do you do question, right? You can go and have a look at that in your own time. Excellent. Good. I'm going to add it actually to the Facebook group as well. I'm going to have to go in. Just bear with me for a moment. Talking about websites, um, as we are here on websites, oh, of course, it's not going to let me Switch, switch, come on. Talking about websites. Here we go. I'm just going to put the 
post in here. Um, I've made a few changes to my own website and I was just going to share them with you in case you're interested in getting more materials for learning. Um, if you want to visit the website, it's the Key Speaking Academy. It looks like this, keyspeakingacademy.com. And on there, you will find lots of stuff, right? You'll find the free live lessons, which is what you are watching right now, of course, okay? You can download the PDF of the latest lesson, but you can also access lots of lessons on every topic under the sun, right? There's loads of them here. If you want to find out about the test, the format, evaluation, speaking topics, you can just go up here, find out all about topics and vocabulary, lots of information uh, and resources there, again, for all the different topics you may need. And the tips area, I've changed this just to make it easier to access what you want. So if you're interested in fluency, you can go here and you can read articles or tips about speaking like a native speaker, how to think in English. If you're interested in vocabulary, you can find 15 phrasal verbs. You can find all the lessons and articles related to that area. Likewise, likewise for IELTS exam preparation. I've got a new book about pronunciation, a pronunciation guide. And if you want to get that, you can just click there and get it as well. All you have to do is just leave your email address so I can send you more stuff to help you, more resources to help you with your, your study. Okay. So just to let you know, and if you are new here today, the the notes that we're taking will be put up on the website. So the notes I'm making here later today will go on the website. You can download those for free as well. So you can carry on studying in your own time. Excellent. So um, where are we? Let's have a look what we've been doing. Let's come back to the cat, <laughs> the topic of work. So we've looked at lots of vocabulary, right? We've looked at the question, what do you do? Um, what's coming up next? Hmm. Listening task. Okay. I'm going to do a, a short listening task with you. Um, it's on this topic and this is what I'm going to do. Let me just put this over here. I want you to listen to someone talk about their work and can you guess their job? Can you guess their job? Let me make this a question, right? So I want you to listen. It's, it's, a, <laughs> it's an interesting listening because some of the words, some of the audio is taken out. I've deliberately taken out the important words. Um, but if you listen generally, see if you can capture the overall meaning and what the job might be. So the person says, well, I am a blank, and then it cuts out. But listen and see if you can guess, okay, what their job is. Um, if you're ready, just give me a thumbs up. In the comments, just give me a thumbs up so that I know you're ready, right? <laughs> George says, hi, sir, learn much. Great, love it. Oh, yes. Let's do it. Hello. I'm a big fan of you. <laughs> Great. The gist, Romelia. Exactly. Get the gist, the general idea. Alishba, I'm impressed by your way of teaching. Great. More important, the thumbs up are here. Okay, so you guys are ready. That's excellent. Let us do the listening. Here we go. So I work as a, I've been doing this job for around 10 years and I, I help people create spaces where they feel comfortable and happy with their friends and family. Yes, it's, and I have to coordinate with the client and other workers on site, but I get to my creativity. Problems always pop up, right, in the implementation stage, and it's up to me 
to make sure that solutions are found. And of course, I'm responsible for making sure that are met. And the students are going, what? <laughs> what? Right. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Stanley, glad it's your first time. Lovely to see you here. Great. Richard, very nice, very nice. Now, some ideas. Romelia says indoor designer, interior architecture, uh, landscape designer. Wow, you guys are good. You guys are very good. A designer, a lawyer. That's interesting, Rashid. Interesting. <laughs> what was that, sir? <laughs> What? <laughs> Thank goodness IELTS listening isn't that difficult, right? Architect or personal designer. Interior designer is an interesting one, right? Coordinator. Hmm. Carpenter. Oh, love it. Love it. Nice. Uh, psychology. Could be. Rosanna says architect. Very interesting. Very interesting. Oh, this one, I like that. Safety officer, because I can see why you've said that. Very nice. Oh my God, I am tone deaf. <laughs> Don't worry. That was a very difficult listening, by the way. Very difficult listening. Um, consultant. It's a bit like when you're on the phone and the phone gets, it's cutting out. Hello, Keith, can you, and would you like, and it keeps cutting out. It's really distracting. So don't worry if you didn't get the answer engineer um okay so we've got a lot of designers interior designers uh Shi Chao says a builder manod also builder designer enigma psychologist psychologist i'm thinking about that oh happy spaces yeah ah interesting um great what else have we got I've got my mouse getting lost. This mouse, not the other mouse. Engineer, could be. Accountant. Hmm, interesting ideas. Okay, gosh, lots and lots of ideas. I'm not going give to give you the answer yet. Not yet, right? What I'm going to do is ask you to watch again, but I'm going to help you this time, okay? Um, here... We're going to watch again, but I'm going to give you the text and see if you can fill in the gaps. Let me see if I can just make this a tad smaller. There you go. OK, so this is what I said, right? I want you again to listen. Of course, the job is number one, so you can get it. I work as a blank number one i've been doing this job for around 10 years and boom i boom okay number two so in addition to guessing the job this time i want you to try and fill the gaps there are five gaps you can put number one number two number three number four put your gaps and then in the message as well okay um so have a quick look at this and let's see Got some interesting ideas. Supervisor, love that idea. Yeah. Coordinating people, right? Manager, yeah. You're coordinating people. Um, blacksmith, absolutely. Why not? Could be. Civil engineer. A plumber. Rodell could be a plumber, right? Could have been. Okay. Civil engineer. Gardener. Hmm. Okay, so let's watch again and see if you can also fill in the gaps. I'll give you both. You can have the, the, list, the audio and the writing as well. Here we go. Give me a thumbs up if you're ready for listening number two. Stanley says estate dealer. Could be. Durov Patel, mechanical engineer. Hmm, okay. Listen, thumbs up. It's number two. Listening number two. 
Great, got your thumbs up. I've got your permission. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go, let's do it. So, I work as a... I've been doing this job for around 10 years and I... I help people create spaces where they feel comfortable and happy with their friends and family. Yes, it's... And I have to coordinate with the client and other workers on site, but I get to... My creativity. Problems always pop up, right, in the implementation stage. And it's up to me to make sure that solutions are found. And of course, I'm responsible for making sure that are met. What you can do is also look at the mouth moving, right? I'm a, it helps you guess the word, right? When you're in conversation and communicating with people, you need everything you can to help you communicate. So looking at people's face, looking at the mouth, looking at their expression, as well as listening is so important in being a good communicator, right? Let's have a look, some of your ideas. Um, I'll put up the words again and see what you've come up with. Kiki fish, I love it. Yes, it's challenging. Expand my creativity, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Nice, anybody else? Samir says, I work as a supervisor. It's a good idea. Um, number four, Julia says, I get to bring up my creativity. Uh -huh. Estella, interior designer. I love it. Challenging. I get to use my creativity. Ah. Yanni, number two. I loved it. Number five, I'm responsible for making sure data are met. Data are met. Hmm. Interesting. Rana says number two is love. Ziad also says number two is love. Right, good. I work as an influencer. Interesting, interesting. Glutamon, it, I get to broaden my creativity. Oh, interesting. Mm, possibly developer love let's see what else we've got love love lover love challenging use deadline make sure my deadline are met oh interesting okay show i get to show my creativity that's nice i get to show my creativity very very nice okay huda says unleash my creativity whoa that's interesting designer loved and i loved i've do i've been doing this job for around 10 years and i loved it if you say i loved it it means but now you don't if you loved it and you still love it, you have to use the present. I love it. So, Anamika, that's possible, what you've said, but it has a slightly different meaning. It means that now you don't, right? Mohammed says to improve my creativity. It could be, could be, right? And the last one from Tandra, interior designer, love challenge, develop my creativity. Okay, interesting. Right, so... Some very, very, very good ideas. We're getting closer, right? We've gone from a strange man speaking and dropping words. Now we understand a bit more the context. Let's watch a final time and check your answers. You've got loads of ideas. Some of them are great. Some of them are fantastic. They're all good. Not all of them are correct. And sometimes because of the, gram the grammar doesn't fit. Let's check your answers with the final uh, playing, okay? Here we go. Are you ready? Give me a thumbs up if you're ready to go. <laughs> Brilliant. I love all your suggestions. Some really good ideas. Thumbs are up. Excellent. Dennis, thank you so much. That'll do me. If Dennis says yes, 
then it's yes, let's begin. Here we go. So I work as a builder. I've been doing this job for around 10 years and I love it. I help people create spaces where they feel comfortable and happy with their friends and family. Yes, it's challenging and I have to coordinate with the client and other workers on site, but I get to unleash my creativity. Problems always pop up, right, in the implementation stage, and it's up to me to make sure that solutions are found. And of course, I'm responsible for making sure that deadlines are met. Well, look at that. Listen, well done. So all of you guys who said builder, Bob the builder, you've got it exactly right. Lovely. Very, very good. Well done. This is actually what it was. I can maybe just make this a bit smaller to fit on the one page. Oh, no, it's missing the first bit. <laughs> I work as a builder. I work as a builder. Bob the builder. Can he do it? Yes, he can. There we go. So builder love, challenging, unleash my creativity, right? To release my creativity. Um, and then deadlines are met to meet a deadline, right? Is to reach, to do the work in time when it must be done, right? Excellent, good. Unleash, yeah, so B, does what does it mean, unleash? It means to release my creativity. Exactly, to release, yes. Good, let's see, anybody get the right answer? A lot of you got the right answer, right? Yeah, Kiki, the, the, the coat is trying to show you I work as a builder. Um, I was actually gonna have a hammer in my hand, but I thought that would make it a bit too easy right so we've looked at this you can see all of the language we've been using to unleash i'll just make that clear for you all right is to release it's to release boom in a big way boom, to unleash your creativity problems always pop up to pop up right is to appear i think you know that in the implementation stage, implementing the building of the house. I'm responsible for making sure deadlines are met. Excellent, good. Very, very nice. Okay, good. Um, what's next? Let's have a look. Listening task. After the listening task, we move on to what if you don't work outside the home? What happens then? I've noticed it's got very, very dark. Listen, let me um, turn my light on. Bear with me. <clears throat> of course, it was also an excuse to get a drink and stay uh, hydrated, I think is the word. Over... Um, over the months, in fact, over the years, a lot of students have said to me, Keith, what about us people who are not students and we don't work? Because you know, in IELTS speaking at the start, the examiner will say, what's your name? <clears throat> uh -huh. Do you work or are you a student? And a lot of people say, but Keith, I don't work. I'm not a student. I'm a housewife or I'm a stay at home dad or I'm a homemaker. What do I say? What do I talk about? Um, don't panic. Don't worry. You just have to say, um, I don't work. I'm a, I'm a homemaker, right? And then the hopefully the questions will be adapted to you. Um, if you're not a student, but to be honest, all of you are studying English and studying IELTS. So although you're not a full-time student, you could say, well, I'm a homemaker and I'm a part-time student because I'm preparing for IELTS. And then you could talk about studying, right? 
But don't worry, it's absolutely fine. I'm going to share some vocabulary, right, with you about talking about being a homemaker, which is a very American word, but I like that word. I think it's a nice word, so I'm going to use it. First of all, let's have a look. Eat, uh, because there are other situations, right? Of course, um, it may be that what if you don't work? I mean, work outside the home. Maybe you're unemployed. Maybe you've left school, so you're not a student. You haven't got a job yet, right? You could be unemployed. The problem is unemployed is fine. Actually, no problem at all. Another way of saying that, because some people... Some people feel bad about being unemployed. Of course, it's not a great situation and it is. it can have a very negative stigma attached to it for some people. I'm unemployed and people think, mm, not good, no money, lazy, blah, 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 which is not necessarily true. So there are other, way, other phrases we can use to say, I'm unemployed, right? So people often say, I'm between jobs. I've left one job and I'm looking for another job. I'm between jobs, right? Um, or you could say, I'm looking for a job at the moment. Maybe you say, I was a student. I've just finished university and now I'm looking for a job, right? So you could also say, I'm looking for a job. Another way of saying it is I'm transitioning careers. And what this means is you're changing career. And this is more and more common nowadays, um, especially as people are losing their job. And this happened in, during the pandemic a lot, right? People lost their job. Um, and they actually have to retrain, oh, excuse me, they have to retrain and look for a new job or a new career. So to say you're changing career you can say, I'm transitioning careers. That means I'm changing into a new career. And in that change, you're not working. So you've left your job. Um, I mean, this happened to me, right? I was transitioning careers in a way. Because before, I taught for a long time. And then I was an education manager in Asia. And I was managing projects for many years. And then I left that. I was without a job for several months. And then I came back into online teaching. And that was transitioning careers. And when I arrived in Spain, I could say to people, well, I'm transitioning careers. Actually, I was unemployed. I had no job. Um, I Actually, I also said to people, I'm a freelancer. But even when I wasn't working for the first month, it was I'm transitioning careers, right? So the different ways you can say it, I'm transitioning careers. Or just say, I'm not working at the moment. I'm whatever you're doing, right? I'm taking a gap year. Some students leave university. They don't work. They just travel for a year. I'm taking a gap year. Um, the other situation is to take time off work. So that is the idea. There are two ways. There's, I'm taking a gap year for students. So that's for, uh, if you like, ex-students. So students who have who've stopped for a year, they're not studying, they're not working, they're taking a gap year to travel. I'm taking time off work. So to take time off work is the, the other expression. Taking a sabbatical. A sabbatical is when you stop working, usually for a year, and you do something else. Sabbatical tends to be, not always mind, but it tends to be for teachers, like university teachers and professors, who during their career, they stop working for a year and they stop teaching and they do something else. Maybe they write a book. Maybe they do a research project. Maybe they go and work for another government department in a, or, or something. They, they take a sabbatical, so they leave their job. Um, it traditionally comes from the Bible. Apparently, the, in the Bible, they talked about um, 
people, anybody, the farmers, for example, would stop working every seven years. They would stop working for a year to let the land um, grow, I think, if I'm right. But that's where it comes from. So basically, you stop working for a, for a time, not maybe less than a year. Usually, it's a, a year, right? Right, good. Um, I'm retired. Well, a very good. Absolutely, I'm retired. Um, so here, what do you say? Well, <laughs> actually, I'm retired. <laughs> So I no longer work. So if you're retired, oh, you can't see, sorry. Actually, I'm retired, so I no longer work. I used to, and then explain what you used to do. And what will happen then is the examiner will ask you questions about work, but in the past, right? What were you responsible for? Did you like your job? Um, etc etc okay so you can talk about that about what you do now um, and remember being a student studying anybody can study so even if you're retired you could say well I actually I study I study English uh, in my spare time right Aram says job oh my god I, I could join this is this real Eddie it's real sure it's real <laughs> Job hunting. Yes, I'm looking for a job. I'm job hunting. I'm job hunting. You could. It sounds a little bit... I'm job hunting at the moment. Yes. It's not my favourite. And I'm trying to think out why it sounds a bit strange. It sounds a little bit formal. I'm job hunting. We talk about job hunters and a headhunter. But yes, I mean, you can say that. Yes, job hunting at the moment. <laughs> Cosmin, I'm not working right now. I'm a couch potato. Funny, nice, good. Domenica says, I used to be a researcher in the field of marine biology prior to the pandemic but now I'm transitioning careers as I've been studying English as a foreign language for two years. Domenico, wow, fantastic. That is really, really nice. Great. Naura says, I'm sabbatical for the moment. Right, I'm on. So we would normally say I'm on sabbatical. I'm taking a sabbatical or I'm on sabbatical, right? Let me bring that up and add that. I'm on sabbatical at the moment. Nice, very, very nice, right. Hello, Joyce from Hong Kong. Nice to see you here at last. I've been waiting for you. <laughs> Eddie says, I had worked for several years, then I stopped. Now I'm studying. Great, absolutely fine. I'm currently employed. What is the model answer? The model answer. I don't think there is a model answer, right? I'm currently employed. I'm currently employed and I work as a teacher. I help people, right? As we said before, those templates could help you develop that if you are employed. A job seeker. Yep, you could say I'm a job seeker. I'm job hunting. I am a job... I'll add that one as well. I'm a job seeker at the moment. That's nice. Uh, Nutapat, if I'm a student but I've not studied in university yet, what could I say what I am now? Well, just say I'm a student at school and I'm studying and just mention one or two of the subjects you're studying, right? The examiner will know if you say school that you're studying many, many subjects. So it's fine. You can talk about that as well. Okay. Uh, yeah. May I make a joke for the examiner for a good mood? Uh, my honest recommendation is not to do that because 
different people have different senses of humor. So what you think is humor, the examiner may not think is funny. You can do if it's very, very simple. Um, but I would recommend not doing that. But of course you can. And a good mood is, is great. I think the best thing for a good mood is just smiling. Just smile at the examiner, right? <clears throat> great. So, Kir Jonoj, I'm on sabbatical at the moment as I'm preparing for the IELTS test. Great, good. Excellent, good. So we've got that. Uh, we've got taking time off on sabbatical. I'm retired. Um, and then, as we said before, I'm a homemaker. I'm a stay-at-home, stay-at-home mum or a stay-at-home dad. And then some of the activities. So this is all connected with the stay-at-home mum idea or stay-at-home dad. I take care of the housework, look after the kids and whatnot. This is a very natural way of saying um, and so on, right? A lot of students say, I do this, I do that and so on. And so on is okay, but it's not that natural. Much more natural in spoken English is what not and what not, right? I teach English and French and Spanish and what not and so on. So I take care of the housework, look after the kids and what not. It just means and other things, right? And so on. I do the school run, which means take kids to school. So to do the school run is a nice expression. If you do that, if you don't, just make it up <laughs> just to practice the expression. Um, it's up to me to, again, do you remember that kind of responsibility language? I'm responsible for. I'm responsible for sounds kind of formal for a job. I think if you're at home, you could say it's up to me to do the weekly shop prepare for the meals and whatnot. It's up to me. I handle different things. I handle the children. I handle the washing. I handle the cooking. I handle family finances. Again, if you do, if you don't, you can make it up just to practice. I handle all the different things, right? Family finances, the cooking, the washing, when we say the washing, we mean the clothes, right? Washing of clothes. Maybe you say, I do some part-time work, right? I know a few stay-at-home dads. I know one stay-at-home dad does some part-time work. Um, I know a stay-at-home mum. She does some part-time work online. She sells things online. So that could be a, an option as well. Um, and talking about jokes... <laughs> if you want to make a joke, this is my joke, but maybe it's not funny. I have to be a multitasking genius. It's true, right? People working at home, I mean, being a homemaker, they have so many things to do. And to balance all of them, you have to be a multitasking genius. <laughs> so there you go. Right. Lots of things there to talk about. Those things that you, um, if you're not working outside the home. Let me check in with you. Let's see. JJ says, have you guys ever encountered the examiner that intentionally pretend not to listen to you while you're talking on the speaking exam? Or something bit his nail whilst I was talking. Yeah, that sometimes happens, JJ. Yes, I know that happens. Um, I don't think I don't think it's intentionally pretending not to listen. I think they're listening, but some people just don't show their attention the same way. Some people, when they listen, just look like that and and bite their nails, right? Different. It's like you. Oops. It's like you know when some people are listening in school and they they doodle, they're writing and they're drawing, right? Some people listen really well, but they have to be drawing. But it looks like they're not listening. I think it's just ways different people are. Jasmine Preet, 
Wow. Thank you so much. That's very, very kind of you to say. Very nice. Thank you. Um, Huda says, I'm a stay-at-home mum. I look after my kids, take care of the house and whatnot. Lovely. And you're a fantastic student. That's really nice. Okay. Greetings from Iran. Anna says, it's up to me to handle all the house stuff. Great. All the house stuff. Just to add that in for you, uh, Anna. All the house stuff. I like that because that encapsulates the washing, the cooking, the kids, the cleaning, right? And whatnot. <laughs> Excellent. Good. I'm going to move on because where are we? Keith, you're in Santander. What's next? After working in the home, changes in the job market. Oh, Lordy, look at the time. Okay, let's do this because I've still got a couple of things to do, but we've got time. It's okay. Bear with me. I have a question for you guys. Here's the question. How has the job market changed? Um, well, that's not the question. Sorry. How the job market has changed is a statement. The question is, what is the biggest change in the job market? Hmm. What's the biggest change in the job market? What do you think are the changes in the job market in recent years, right? Maybe have a think, write something down for me. And uh, I'll put on some, um, some quiet music, maybe hip hop this time. That gives me a moment to check something. Right, good. Brilliant, some really, really good ideas there. So people have talked about working at home, um, the studying and teaching online, um, e-shopping has come up a lot, 
um, salaries changing, the inadequacy of jobs, not enough jobs. Um, there's a lot of stuff there, some really good ideas. I'm going to share a few collocations with you. Collocations are just two or three words that go together. So these are useful collocations. And these are really the challenges, right? Not in any order. So now we have more workplace flexibility, right? Workplace flexibility. Flexi time is where you choose the time you start and the time you finish. Remote working, right? That idea of working from home. Notice the difference working from home and working in or at home. Um, I'm working, well, let's see. I'm working at home, in the home. I'm working in the home. Working in the home, right, is the housewife or house husband. Working from home means that you're working for a company or a freelance, you're paid, you're doing paid work, but you're remote working like I do. The gig economy has grown. So the gig economy is a, a, a collocation. The gig economy is basically a gig is a piece of work. So the gig economy refers to freelancers, consultants, people with short term contracts or no contracts who are working uh, in the economy, right? So such as freelancers and consultants. So people who are doing, they're doing, um, yeah, pieces of work rather than a job and a contract for life, they have on off pieces of work. Increase in online working means a growing demand for more technical skills. So again, online working is your collocation. Growing demand also for technical skills. Somebody mentioned this. Um, zero hour contracts. So these are contracts that are unfortunately, I guess unfortunately, very common in the UK where people are contracted but actually they don't, they're contracted for zero hours. So they're contracted, but they don't get any um, social security, no benefits, no job security at all. Um, but it's super convenient. You can work in a very flexible way, but you're not protected, if you like. We have the shift or the move towards e-commerce means fewer shop assistants and more warehouse workers. Logically, right, there's more e-commerce. We don't need people in shops, but we need people in the warehouse to move the goods and to sell the goods. Just notice when you talk about people, we talk about fewer, not less, but fewer, right? Less is for uncountable. Fewer is for countable. Fewer shop assistants because of that S, right? More warehouse workers. So just be careful with your grammar here when you're talking about this. We've got rises in the minimum wage. Many countries have had a rise in the minimum wage, which I guess is a good thing, obviously. Less job security. Now notice job security is uncountable, so it's less job security. More freelancers. Again, that was in the, the gig economy. I would put that up with the gig economy here more freelancers and consultants. Um, unemployment, the unemployment rate has risen. The unemployment rate, there you go, is the, the number of people who are unemployed as a percentage. Um, more people do part-time work, I should say. Do part-time work. Okay. Um, let's see, there's lots more, lots of great ideas. CISA, CISA says, technology has brought a lot of changes in the job market today. And meetings can be done online rather than in person. Makes it easier for everyone. Yes, yeah, so technology changing everything. 
uh, moving to new technology rather than human labor. Yep, rather than, just to add for you. Nice. The demand for virtual marketing assistance has raised. Now, virtual marketing assistance, absolutely. Look at the language here, right? Because I've said unemployment rate has risen, has gone up. So likewise, Krithika, for you and for everybody, this is such a common mistake, right? Is to say demand for virtual markings, da, da, da. the demand has risen. It has risen. Okay, you can say I raised something, but something has risen. Okay, nice. That's lovely, Krithika. So thank you so much for that, because I think that is going to help everybody as well. It's a very common mistake. Um, people like to do their own businesses rather than paid jobs. Very true. And that is exactly the growth of the gig economy. So this has made the gig economy grow more. And that has meant we've got more zero hour contracts where people are not given social security and such. Okay. Right. The cost of production have increased. It costs an arm and a leg. And also the GM food expanded. Yes, the GM food is another topic, you're right, but the cost of production has increased, or the costs of productions, I know you're spelling, you're writing too fast, have increased. We've got country inflation, so the price in the market can go up and down. Well, yes, the inflation in many countries is going up and up and up, right? It's going up a lot. Okay, excellent. So there are a lot of phrases there. We can talk about um, the the changes in the job market. Given the time, I'm going to move on. Um, we can come back. Remember, all of these notes, they've gone, but all of these notes I will share with you on the website later. Okay, let's have a look at idioms, okay? To pull your weight. What does that mean? So here are some idioms on the topic of um, work, right? Talking about work. Idioms about work. Okay, the first one, to suit someone down to the ground. To suit someone down to the ground means to be perfect for someone. So very often we use that to talk about jobs. We say, this job suits me down to the ground. It's perfect. So if the examiner asked, well, do you like your job? Oh, yes. I think my job suits me down to the ground. Ting, ting, tick, nice. <laughs> okay. Um, Min Bin, sorry I'm late. Wow, you are super late. We're almost finished. <laughs> Not to worry, you can always come back and watch it later. Number two, to never do a stroke of work. A stroke is like a pen stroke when you write with a pen and you make a strike or a stroke or a paintbrush stroke if you're painting. To do a stroke of work um, or to never, it's usually the negative, I never do a stroke of work, is to be lazy and do the least work possible, right? Um, in the office, you always have one person, right? One person who's super lazy, never does the work. You can say, she's so lazy, she never does a stroke of work. Not even one thing. Similar expression, again, for the workplace, is to pull your weight. So to pull your weight, to pull your weight, you can imagine, right, as you're moving your body, is to do your fair share of work. Again, this is often used in the negative. Somebody in the office is always lazy. They don't do what they should. So we always complain about him because he doesn't pull his weight. 
He doesn't pull his weight. He doesn't do his job, doesn't do the work he should. So you can use both of those, right? If the examiner asks, do you get on well with your colleagues? Yes, I get on well with some of them, but there are one or two in the office who never do a stroke of work. And it's frustrating because when we do group projects, they just don't pull their weight and other people have to work harder, right? So these are nice expressions you can use to talk about that. Moving on, the glass ceiling. You may have heard of the glass ceiling. A glass ceiling is basically an invisible barrier that stops someone from rising up. This is used a lot lately in the context of women who are working more and more with the intention of getting promoted and moving up to be a, an executive or a director. But in many companies, they can't. And it's not because there's a policy against them, but there's an invisible barrier. So basically, there are unspoken policies which stop women getting up. Not only women, it depends, but it's often used in that context. So we can say a glass ceiling stops many women from advancing in many industries, right? That may be prejudice, discrimination, bias, all sorts of policies that indirectly stop them moving up. It's called a glass ceiling because you can see <laughs> it's an invisible barrier, right? To hit a glass ceiling. Okay, great. Let's have a quick look just as I'm coming up to the last expressions. Some of you here. Yasmin says, yes, this job suits me down to the ground. Great. April says he's never done a stroke of work since. <laughs> oh, this is a good one. Yeah, Chanda, my manager asked me to finish the whole project by myself. It's a big ask. That's a lovely idiom, right? It's a tall order or it's a big ask. Is It's, it's a lot of work for me to do, right? To do your part is another good idiom to make your contribution. There's a lot of idioms here. Yes. Jens says, my co-worker does not pull his weight. Yeah. <sighs> what can you do, right, with co-workers who don't pull their weight? This is nice, Kiki. Working as a freelancer suits lots of youngers down to the ground. Youngers. That's an interesting word. I put it with a, not with a capital. Now, that may be... Maybe that's an American word, youngers. I'm not sure. In the UK, we don't use that. We say youngsters, youngsters, right? Anna says it's a tall order to do it. Yes. Yeah. Um, yes. So somebody asks you to do something that's difficult. It's a tall order. Let me add that one in. I'll add a couple of those in because those are good expressions. If someone asks you to do a difficult task, you can say it's a tall order. It's a big ask. It's a tall order. It's a big ask. Um, there's another one. What was it in my head? It's a tall order. It's a big ask. It's a... Uh, ah, it's gone. Oh, well, never mind. It'll come back. Whoa. <laughs> tall order, big ask. Expressions to say I'm very busy. I have a lot on my plate. Nothing to do with being greedy and eating too much, but just too much work. I have a lot on my plate. I'm snowed under. You can imagine the idea of there's all this snow and you just can't move because of the papers, the work, the tasks. I'm bogged down, same idea. It, the idea that you're under all of this, the swamp, the grass. Sorry, the swamp, the grass, the, the bog. A bog is like a swamp, basically. I'm bogged down with work, just I have too much to do.
right? Those are nice expressions you can use in the workplace as well. You can say Asad Ali the Asad Ali, Ali the Lion. Love it. I'm swamped with work. Yes. You can say, um, yeah, let's add that. I'm swamped with work. It's the same idea. It's, it's the swamp, right? And the bog. I'm swamped down. I'm swamped with work. I'm swamped with work. <laughs> I'm up to my neck in work. Yes. Oh, these are all great expressions. Up to my neck. I'm up to my neck with work, in work, in work, with work. Nice. Let's add all of these. Denny quite rightly says, I will be snowed under tomorrow since I got a day off. That's the trouble with having a day off. The next day, you're snowed under, up to your neck, swamped with tasks to do. <laughs> Lisa says, I'm exhausted. Me too. <laughs> uh... Noah says, today I had a lot on my plate, so I'm a bit run down. Run down. That's a great expression. Just to make sure it's clear for everybody, it's without the D, right? Run down. I'm run down. I'm tired. Yes, I'm exhausted. Up to my neck, up to my ears. Some people have said ears as well. We do say that as well. Up to your ears in work. Great. Yes, nice. Bombarded with too much work. Similar expression. Very, very good. April says, to have a lot of irons in the fire. Yes, that's not only busy. Yes, it is busy, but it means you're doing lots of different tasks at the same time. Yes, but similar expression. Fantastic. Okay, so all of these um, idioms, there's a lot of them there. Again, you can get all of these, all of this. It's actually over here, Keith. All of these will go into the PDF at the end. So do remember um, with the idioms that do remember at the very, very end, I'm going to put all of this into here. It goes into the website, the free live lessons. So you'll be able to get this. You can watch it and you can get it here. This will be updated later today. Um, but for the moment, we're going to finish up today with a game of Kahoot. Kahoot, many of you know, it's a fun game to help us review some of the language from today. Um, what I'm going to do is set it up. If you don't know how to play, let me just explain. It's very, very easy. You have to go to kahoot.it and when you're there, what you can do is you need to watch me here, but maybe on a phone or another tab, that's where you play the actual game. Okay, so Kahoot, let's set it up. Let me find it in the website. And as I'm setting it up, I'll put a little bit of um, a little bit of what? A bit of rhythm and blues? Yeah. Yeah. Good. Enough of that. We're there. Let's move in straight into Kahoot. So you need to go to Kahoot.it, put in your name, and then you put in the pin 550-8509. 550-8509. And like Hero, you can join us. Oh, I love all of these uh, avatars. Lovely. Okay, I'll just give you a, a minute or so to get in there, kind of get as many people in as we can. 
Um, if you can't get in, don't worry. You can always um, just put your answer in the chat box as well. That's fine. Jasmine says, hard yakka is work hard in Australian slang. I had no idea about that. Hard yakka. Nice. Jans, you are welcome. My pleasure. Jasmine, you're just in time to play Kahoot. So go to Kahoot.it, put in your name. Hello, somebody's stolen my name. Keith the Owl. <laughs> and... Uh, Put in the game pin 5508509. We're going to be starting very soon. Estella, eight. So game pin 5508509. Come on, Hammy, get a move on. Right, let's do it, guys. Let's start. Oh, people are still joining. How many have we got? I can't see how many are in. Never mind. I'm going to I'm going to get going before we all fall asleep. <laughs> Fabrizio, welcome. Here we go. Work. I'll read the question. I work as a teacher and I'm responsible blank making sure students learn effectively. Okay. I work as a teacher and I'm responsible blank making sure students learn effectively. At as for two. Those are the choices. As at for two. So you have 30 seconds to give your answer. Well, that's interesting. So yes, the majority got four, which is correct. I'm responsible for, or I'm responsible for, I'm responsible for making sure students learn. Great. At, no. You can't use at with responsible. So remember that, guys. Responsible for something or for someone. I see lots of answers in the chat that you're all correct. Well, most of you are. Well done. Great. Quest. Well, here's the uh, the leaderboard. Whoa, Gong, you're at the top. Well done. Alan A, Elvis, Merco, OG. Let's move on to question number two. I'm not working now. I am blank jobs next to, between, beside, in front of. I'm not working now. I am blank jobs next to, between, beside, in front of. Rodel Arado, I saw your message. Thank you. Whoa, look at that. 69. Got between. Well done. I'm between jobs. Basically means you're unemployed at the moment. I'm between jobs. Excellent. Well done. None of the others really work here, right? Okay, good. Let's have a look. Is Gong still on the top? No, 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 no. Alan A., the cowboy monkey has gone into first place, Elvis into second, um, and up 19 places, San is the highest climber. Question number three. She is so lazy, she never does a blank of work. Stroke, stripe, stripe, trip. <laughs> she is so lazy, she, ne she never does a blank of work. Stroke, strike, stripe, or trip. Great photo. So, well done, Mashid. Well done. Oh, there's a lot of interesting answers here. Stroke. Yeah, absolutely. It's She never does a stroke of work. 
A lot of people said strike, I noticed in the comments as well. Um, so a stroke of work, it's a stroke. A strike can have a similar meaning, but it's not the right word in this context, right? This is an idiom with a specific word, a stroke, okay? You can remember it by looking at the O in stroke and the O in work. So it's O, O, stroke of work. The O and the O match. That's one way to help you remember. Okie dokie, here we go. Alan is still at the top. Well done. We've got Street D second and Chien has come into, has come into third place. Excellent. Reham, highest climber. I think we're on the last question. I can't come to the party. I'm too bogged blank with work. Under, over, up, down. I can't come to the party. I'm too bogged blank with work. Under, over, up or down. Let's see what you guys say. Well done, Mochi. Ronald, well done. Half us, be careful. MD, well done. Oh, this was a tricky one, right? Um, it's bogged down. So down was the right answer. 34 got it right. Um, I'm bogged under with work. No, you're snowed under, but you're bogged down. Yeah, difficult to remember, but think of snowed is that you're under the snow, but the bog, you can't really be under a bog because that's like a, a lake or a swamp. So it's more that you're, well, how can I say, just bogged down. <laughs> It's the old English. Uh, <laughs> it's what it's what a lot of English teachers do. That, and it's true because sometimes there's no rule to explain, and we just say, "Well, it just is." No, but teacher, why? Well, it just is, right? <laughs> That's sometimes what we say. I'm bogged down with work. Okie dokie. Let's have a look. Where are we on the? Uh, are we on the podium? We are. Number three. Oh, Chen, well done. Number two, Suki, out of the blue. And number one, yes, yeah, San, look at that. Well done, congratulations. Runners up were Ashkin and Miriam. Hooray! <laughs> oh, I love the little bouncing head. That's great. Well done. Round of applause again. Well done to San. Fantastic job. You've done a really good job. So, brilliant. Nice to see all of you today. That kind of brings us towards the end of today's lesson. It's been a busy lesson. We've had a lot on our plates. Um, essentially, cats, all cats. We've been looking at the topic of work, right? Um, like this cat that is bogged down with work, snowed under, up to its little ears. We've been looking at the vocabulary, particularly around the question, what do you do and how do you answer that question? We did a listening task with Bob the Builder, um, testing your listening and practicing those templates to answer that question. We've talked about what to say if you don't work outside the home. So if you're a homemaker, stay at home mum, stay at home dad, uh, retired, unemployed or in between, in between jobs um, or transitioning careers maybe, right? Nice language. We've looked at changes in the job market, especially where this topic develops into kind of a more of a part three question and all of those things around technology, the rising prices, inflation, um, the growth of the gig economy, more freelancers, um, fewer shop assistants, the growth of e-commerce, et cetera, et cetera and what not and the collocations you need to talk about that we've talked about idioms some fantastic idioms to talk about your day-to-day -day job right um and then we finished up with kahoot to show that you are not asleep that you are all still here active and well even after my two hours <laughs> you must be exhausted two hours of english well done if you've stayed the whole time seriously i take my hat off 
to you. Fantastic. I'm so pleased you've done that. Um, so just as a final word to let you know, right, the website, um, I'll take the notes from today. So, I mean, all of these notes that we've been looking at over there um, will go onto the website. You can get them in the free live lessons bit over there. If you need more information, um, do visit the website. Go and check out my um, ebook, Common Mistakes in IELTS Speaking. You can download it here. Just put in your name and email um, and then I can send that to you. It's a really nice ebook. I think it gives you some great tips and ideas if you're preparing, right? Um, it's just called the most, the most common mistakes that you know people make when they do the test and, and what to do instead, right? How to avoid those. So go and check it out. It's all at the Keith Speaking Academy dot com. You can find out information. There's information about my courses there if you're interested as well. Be delighted to to have you on the courses. And I think that's it, guys. Um, the next class is in a month's time, right? So we're on the first Thursday of each month, which will be the first of December. Wow. Okay. Our next class will be the first of December. Do remember that these are on the first, once a month, the first Thursday of each month. If you want more live lessons, you can get them in the, the course, the gold course that I have. Um, that you can find out about that. Whoops, over there. It's on the website. It's up here. It's the gold course. Um, we have two extra live lessons each month to help you practice and study all the different and latest topics in IELTS speaking. So go to the website and go and check it out. Key Speaking Academy. Key Speaking Economy. No, the Key Speaking Academy. That's it. Thank you so much, all of you, for joining me. It's been a pleasure and I will see you, well, I'll see you maybe in the next video that you're going to watch. That would be nice. Let's do that. Okay, my friends, take care. All the best. I'll leave you with some music. I know you told your friend you're not okay. And tell me what's wrong and why you never said you felt that way. And guess you're trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long. It hurts to watch your blue eyes fade to gray. As you fade away, yeah. Yeah, I'm about to fade away Cause every time I wake up I feel like it's Monday Something's going wrong with all the chemicals up in my brain All of a sudden I don't look at anything the same way Got a build up of my thoughts sitting in an ashtray I'm sorry that I'm so inconvenient, okay Just let me be me and I'll stay out of your way I can see the way you look at me, I'm such a disgrace I never really asked to be brought into this place You wanna love me? Well then baby, have a taste All the highs and the lows no, you'll never be the same I don't really want to hurt you But I can't control the pain If you're sticking by my side Maybe we could be okay Okay, okay Maybe you could be the change I need today I promise that I'm never fell this way I really hope that you Will choose to stay Through all the pain I know you told your friend You're not okay And tell me what's wrong And why you never said You felt that way Trying to stay strong and fake a smile until I look away. But I've known you too long, it hurts too hard. Brilliant. That's it. See you soon. Take care. Bye bye.